Hi there, and welcome to video two of our trigonometric graph series, looking at what happens when we put a number in here, or in here, or a sine and cos function, and how that changes our graph. Okay, your learning intentions for this video is you'll to sketch a graph where we add that b into the middle of our sine and cos x, and describe the amplitude, the period, the intercepts, and the maximum and minimum values of these graphs. Okay, so. Firstly, again, we're going to look at a little bit of an investigation. We've got the values there for x and y equals sine x, just like we looked at last video. I've added in some more values this time, 45, 1, 3, 5, 2, 2, 5, and 3, 15, because I think that will help me show what I'm about to show. Uh, but today what we're going to look at is this y equals sine 2x. Now, what that means is when I do sine 2x, I'm going to take x first before I do sine to it, before I apply the sine function to it and double it. So double zero is zero, so it's still going to give me zero when I apply sine. For 45, when I double 45, I will get 90. So when I do sine of 90, I get 1. So that means when I do sine of double 45, I get 1. When I do sine of double 90, I'm doing 180, so that's going to give me zero. When I do sine of 135, that gives me, or double, sine of double 135, that's 270. So sine of double 135 will give me negative 1. And sine of double 180 gives me 0. Okay, now, firstly, if I'm looking at my sine graph, which I'll draw in red between 0 and 360, it goes up to 1, down to 180 down at 180 and then back up to 360. So that's 180, that's 360. My maximum value is 1, my minimum value is negative 1. Now looking at the sine 2x graph, you can see that we've got the same values. They're no, they're no bigger or no smaller. We've still got a maximum at 1 and a minimum at negative 1. But you notice that they've all squeezed in by a factor of 2. So this 0 at the end is half as close to zero as it was. This negative one is half as close as it was. That zero is half as close. And same with that one, it's half as close. So what's happening with our sine 2x graph is that we're going to actually have a sine wave, but only in half the distance. So it's going to be just as high and just as low, which might not be brilliantly drawn there, but it's going to go halfway. Now we know it doesn't just stop there. We looked at the, the graph online last time that shows that the sine wave goes on and on and on. So we're actually going to be able to fit another wave in after that. So we've got, in fact, that's terribly wrong. But yeah, I hope you get the idea. These should all be at the same height. There's one high. That's all one low. But because we've got sine 2x, we're going to have twice as many graphs in the same in the space. Okay, now let's look at a couple of examples that we can apply that to. Now, these would be good to put into your notes. So, firstly, what I want to deal with is this 0 and 360. That just means that we're going to sketch them all the way between 0 and 360. Now, in part A here, we're looking at the graph. We're looking at a cost graph, so we're looking at a different wave starting at 1 and ending at 1. We're looking at a 2x. So that means between 0 and 360, I'm going to have two cost waves. So there's my first one. And there's my second one, all the way to 360, 180 still in the middle. I've not changed the amplitude at all, I've got no number at the front, so it's just 1 and minus 1. That's my cost 2x graph. The number in there has squeezed it in by a factor of 2. Okay, looking at this one here, my sine 3x graph, I'm looking at a sine wave. I've not changed the amplitude, there's no number in the front like we dealt with in the last video. And now I've got a 3 in there. So that means between 0 and 360, I'm going to have 3 sine waves. So there's my first one, there's my second one, and there's my third one. Oh, yeah, perfect. Now that's still going to be 360, and the middle's going to be 180, and it's still going to be 1 and minus 1, because I've not changed that amplitude. Okay, so the only thing that's changing when I put a number in there alongside x, is I'm now going to get three waves in 360. Now working with those two examples there, looking at the period, 
Okay, looking at the period of that first wave to cause 2x, remember period was how long it took for the wave to start repeating. But this time, it starts repeating there. Okay, so my period is 180, and that happened because it's 360 divided by 2 that I've closed in. Here, my period is going to be, well, it starts repeating there. And that's after, well, if I've got three waves in what, 360, if I divide that 360 up into three waves, then it's going to give me a period of 120. Every 120 degrees, that wave starts repeating. Okay. Uh, it's the same with the intercepts as well and the maximum turning points. Because I've not changed the amplitude, the maximum and the minimum are still at the same height. So the y values are 1 and minus 1. And everything else is going to come in by the factor that's, that's involved in here. Okay, now that's not really examined so much. Exactly what we've drawn there is, is really common to be examined. And that's the stuff that I, I would maybe concentrate on first, but it's applying to every point on that. Now, this one here is slightly trickier because we've got now got a number in front again. I'm going to redo that because it's rubbish. Okay, so that 5 is at the front, just like our last video. So that means instead of having an amplitude of 1, we've now got an amplitude of 5. So 5 and minus 5. The 4x in here means that we're going to have 4 waves in 360. So there's my oh, terrible one. The 5 and the minus 5 are in the wrong place then. Sorry about that. So that's 5 and minus 5. There's my first wave, my second wave, the third wave, and my fourth wave. Okay, now that's 360 still. Here is 180. But this time we're 5 and minus 5. So I've got four sine waves. And because that 5 is at the front, I'm now 5 and minus 5. The period, I've got four waves in 360. Each wave, until it repeats, is going to be 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degrees. Okay, now for D and E, I'm going to change the rules. Okay, I'm going to ignore this bit just now. I don't want to do it between 0 and 360. If the question asks me in the exam, I'll have to. But here, the reason I'm doing that is if I'm wanting to put 6 waves in and 10 waves in, it's going to be messy as hell. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to show you another way of presenting it to show, so that we've got the same value, the same information, but just a little bit neater. Okay, so firstly, looking at this, we've got a cosine wave. So it's going to be a cosine wave, but rather than show you the whole wave from 0 to 360, I'm just going to show you what one wave does. Okay, so that's one cosine wave. The 3 at the front, that's my amplitude, so 3 and minus 3. This 6 in here, well, one wave, if one wave normally goes 360, that 6 is going to squeeze it in by a factor of 6. So that first wave is going to be at 60 degrees. Okay, because if you had six waves in there, it would be at 60 degrees, that first one. Okay, and that's showing all the same information, it's just not showing it all the way to 360. So this one here, the amplitude's 12, so it's going to go 12 to minus 12. I've got a sine wave, so it's back to this. So it's 12 and minus 12. But this point here isn't 360. Because there's a 10 there, there's 10 waves in 360, so one wave is going to be 36 degrees, and that's going to be 18 degrees. Okay, now that's a really important skill there, and having that as an example on your notes will be really helpful. We're now going to do it the other way around, giving the graph and identifying the, the equation, and then I'll leave you a couple of examples to try for when you come into class. Now, that first one there, 2A, first thing I'm noticing, okay, it starts high and ends high, so I'm going to be looking at a cos, so it's going to be cos of something. The amplitude is 9 and minus 9, so it's going to be 9 coses, just like we learned in the last video. I've got 360, and I've got 2 cos waves, starting here, the first one ends here, and then we've got a second one in between, so it's going to be 9 cos 2x. It might be an idea as well, so I should have mentioned it at the start. Stop it now and see if you can get off the rest of them. See if you can get the next three yourself. Pause it, come back. Okay, so this one here, B, first thing I'm noticing, right? Well, that's a sine wave. It starts at zero and it ends at zero. Okay, I've got one wave in between those. I've got one wave in between those. I've got one wave in between those. My amplitude is three and minus three. 
so that means I've got three at the start. I've got three waves, so that means I've got three x. So three sine three x. Okay, C slightly different. Important to notice here. I'm not going up to three sixty. I'm going up to ninety. I can see straight away. I've got a sine wave. The amplitude is p minus p, so that's going to be p at the start. And then because I'm going to ninety. That means that 90, 180, and 360, I'm going to have four waves in 360. So it's 4x, sorry, p sine 4x. And lastly for p, a little bit trickier again. It is a cost wave, it's ending not high but low, and uh, starting and ending low. So that's actually an upside down cost wave. So it's going to be y equals, and we're going to have a negative cost wave because we're upside down. It's g high and low, so it's negative g cos. And because that's 36, that means we can fit 10 waves in 360. Okay, the period of that's 36, but my equation is y equals negative g cos 10x. Now, that's what I need you to be able to do. Give these ones a wee shot. Okay, you've got your bronze, silver and gold. Try and sketch them, try and identify the functions, give me the, uh, the formula for them. And what your teacher will do after you've watched this video is go over or give you the answers when you come into class and you can go from there. Thank you very much.